Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Sergeant Jason Robillard. I'm a media relations officer with the Vancouver Police Department. We're here today to announce Task Force Tourniquet. This is a proactive combined BC Police Task Force that has targeted lower mainland crime groups. Behind me, we have some speakers here today. Superintendent Mike Porteous from the Vancouver Police Department, Acting Chief Brian Gately, CFSUBC. Staff Sergeant Lisa Byrne will also be speaking. She's from VPD, she was the team commander. We have Superintendent Brian Edwards from the RCMP Lower Mainland District available for questions afterwards. This really was a combined effort from several Lower Mainland Municipal Police Agencies and RCMP detachments. These are including the Abbotsford Police Department, the Delta Police Department, New Westminster Police Department, Port Moody Police Department, West Vancouver Police Department, the Burnaby RCMP, CFSEU BC, Coquitlam RCMP, IHIT, Langley RCMP, North Vancouver RCMP, RCMP Lower Mainland District, Richmond RCMP, and the Surrey RCMP. I will be available after for unrelated questions after today's announcement has been concluded. This is including last night's homicide. We'll have other guests available for questions and if you could please save your questions till after the guests have completed speaking. As you can see, we have some exhibits here as well. It's over $800,000 in Canadian currency and cash, over $800,000 worth of jewelry, artwork, and a Desert Eagle gold-plated 44 Magnum pistol. I'm gonna turn it over to Superintendent Mike Porteous from the Vancouver Police Department. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm just gonna um, make some brief comments about this task force and, the, and Project Territory, and I'll be available for questions later as will all the other speakers. I'm here today to announce the charges in Project Territory, a 17-month investigation into the Kang Latimer organization. Project Territory falls under the umbrella of Task Force Tourniquet, which as Jason mentioned is a multi-agency team that's been dedicated to combating gang violence in the region since March of 2017. I can now confirm that previous news releases such as Project Tariff, Temper and Treachery that, that we spoke about in the past are all related to Task Force Tourniquet, with Project Territory being the latest and arguably the biggest success. In total, Task Force Tourniquet has charged 34 individuals all gang members and all gang associates with 201 offenses. In Project Territory itself, which is a subset of, of the task force, there have been 92 charges laid against 14 individuals who belong to the Kang and Latimer organization and or the Red Scorpions gang. And you can see some Red Scorpions references on both sides of me. Project Territory represents a significant and um, I would say one of the largest that I've seen in my career, disruption to the ongoing gang violence in the region. The Kang Latimer organization was known to be in conflict with the Brothers Keepers group, the Sandu Sidhu group, and other crime groups in the Lower Mainland. As a result of that, we had an ongoing violent conflict. Multiple shootings and murders in the region are attributed to the conflict, and the Kang Latimer group have had that the Kang Gautama group has been participating in over the, over the past few years. Charged in territory are Kyle Latimer, 27 years, Samit Kang, 26 years, Gary Kang, 22 years, Craig Latimer, the father of Kyle, 55 years, Songer Zooks, 29 years, and Dooley Picciento, 22 years, Jacob Pereira, 25 years, Vitesh Gag or Vitesh Vag, 37 years. Christopher Guman, a 21 year old. Pashminder Bopari, 29 years. Manvir Break, 30 years. Ranbir Kang, 48 years. Mohanvir Kang, 50 years. Gucharn Kang, 68 years. There's also several unindicted co conspirators, co conspirators, which include Jamie Bacon, Cody Havisher. Amandeep Matu, Ranjeev Ajula, Gurvinder Randawa, Abhishek Lohia, Dilraj Gill, Omid Mashinchi, and Jason Deep Opal. The types of charges 
that include, and this is a significant, this is from my memory only the second time the Vancouver Police Department has ever charged for criminal organization type offenses. The Commission of Offense for a Criminal Organization, instructing Commission of Offense for a Criminal Organization, participating in activities of a criminal organization, conspiracy to, traf to commit trafficking in a controlled substance, trafficking in a controlled substance, possession of, for the purposes of trafficking, possession with explosive devices with intent, possession of an explosive device in association with a criminal organization, possession of two prohibited firearms, possession of 22 prohibited firearms, possession of 19 restricted firearms, 14 silencers and, or prohibited devices, and, and possession of proceeds of crimes over $5,000. In Project Territory, the task force has seized 93 firearms, you can see them detailed to my right in the photographs, over 16,000 rounds of ammunition, 59 prohibited devices such as silencers and overcapacity magazines for automatic weapons, one pressure cooker improvised explosive device, approximately 10 kilograms of fentanyl, 40 kilograms of cocaine, methamphetamine and heroin, about $833,000, which are displayed here in Canadian currency, approximately $800,000 specifically in red scorpion design jewelry, which is also displayed, and approximately $350,000 in collector cards, which are over to my right. I'll leave it at that for now, and I'll uh, turn it over to Acting Chief Gately of the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit of British Columbia. Sorry. Uh, thank you, uh, Mike. Uh, thank you and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Gately. I'm a superintendent with the RCMP and I'm uh, currently the acting chief uh, officer for the Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit in British Columbia. CFSUBC is British Columbia's integrated and anti-gang uh, police unit, which brings together police officers and civilian staff from every police agency in the province. The almost 500 uh, highly dedicated and specialized members of our unit are focused on one thing, to target, disrupt, and hold accountable those people and groups who are responsible for gang-related violence in BC. To achieve this, we are uh, involved and engaged in operations and investigations across the entire province, independent of and in uh, conjunction with our policing partners. We also coordinate all gang intelligence for the province under the Provincial Tactical Enforcement Priority Initiative. PTAP, as it's known, is an integrated, province-wide, intelligence-led targeting process that identifies individuals associated to gangs and organized crime. The gang landscape in the province of British Columbia involves criminality that spans uh, across communities and jurisdictions resulting in the need for a strategic, coordinated, and integrated approach by all levels of enforcement, uh, and you'll, you, which you'll hear about today. This ensures, much like this in, in this investigation, we are targeting the right people and that we are unified in our efforts against the main threats in our province. Additionally, through PTAP, the province provides dedicated funds uh, to PTAP-related investigations such as Project Territory. Successes like uh, what you're going to hear about today cannot be achieved without strong collaboration, significant amount of coordination, and high levels of communication. CFSUBC, as we've seen in many previous joint investigations, has the ability not only to bring resources and specific skill sets to the table, but we also, because of our integrated unit have the ability to coordinate with our many policing partners. We know that in uh, complex long-term files that cross numerous jurisdictions, this uh, is critical if there's going to be any success. In this case, it's meant an increased ability for our officers from every agency involved in the investigation to have access to real-time actionable intelligence. It ensures that the information is shared that mitigates any risks to the public and to the police, and appropriate deep confliction uh, occurs so that agencies aren't putting investigations at risk. 
The Combined Forces Special Enforcement Unit of British Columbia is committed to continuing our support of our policing partners in our collective fight against gangs and the violence that organized crime groups uh, cause in our communities in the province. Thank you. Thanks, Chief Gately. Uh, my name is Staff Sergeant Lisa Byrne, and I'm the team commander for uh, Task Force Turnikey and specifically for Project Territory as well. Um, I've been the team commander for this, all of these investigations for approximately a year and a half now. And I'm just here today to speak to you about a couple trends that uh, my team and myself have noticed with respect to gang involvement and the facilitation of gang activity in the Lower Mainland. Um, the first trend that I want to highlight is um, our gang members are subletting high-end rental properties. They're doing this because these properties contain security features which they believe keeps them safe, mostly from rival gangs. Um, these are often towers, either in the downtown cores of various cities, Surrey, Vancouver, Richmond, or other buildings throughout the region and high-end properties in North and West Vancouver. Um, the management companies that are facilitating this, they specialize in this purpose and they are specializing in providing properties for gang members. Short-term rentals are being used, they're being rented by one person, typically the management company, and then subletted to the gang members, often without the owners even knowing that this is occurring. One management company uh, rented to several different groups who were in conflict with each other. My team found this particularly disturbing because we had rival gang members housed within dozens of meters of one another and the potential for spontaneous violence and gunplay was obviously something that was super concerning for us when we saw this happening. Um, the activities that we've also observed in these rentals include the processing of fentanyl and the cooking of da dangerous controlled substances, storages of, storage of firearms and of an explosive device, which is pictured right over to my right, storage of cash and drugs that the gang members were using to store in their stash houses, and parties that rival or that gang members went to. Um, several of these parties are also linked to violent events where drive-by shootings occurred, assaults occurred, and murders occurred. Uh, print, uh, sorry, the second uh, thing that I did want to talk about that we have noticed as sort of a general observation from the team over the last year and a half is parental involvement. Um, as you can see from the indictment, we have three parents who are actually charged with participating in a criminal organization um, in this investigation. Um, Mo and Veer and Gurcharn Kang and Craig Latimer are parents of uh, some of the accused and they've been charged with participating in this criminal organization. Um, the uh, outside of these three individuals and over the broad spectrum of all of the projects that we have run over the last year and a half, we have noticed that parental involvement at times can be anywhere ranging from being complicit into their activities, um, willfully blind of their children's activities, or completely unaware of their children's activities. Um, in order to start to combat this game, gang violence problem, enforcement is not the only thing that the police departments are doing. Um, parental engagement is necessary to assist in preventing gang involvement. Um, there's examples of programs such as VPD's Gang Tackle, CFS, CUBC's and Gang Life, and two VPD supported programs, Her Time and Yo Bro and Yo Girl. These are excellent resources for parents who wish to be educated about gang activity or who are seeking exit strategies for their children who are involved in gang activity. Uh, that's all I have and I'll turn it over to Sergeant Robillard for questions. Thank you. We'll turn over to some questions now. You can just address the panel if you'd like, if you have questions. I can uh, tell you right now that I can't actually speak to specifics about what the charges entail and the evidence that leads up to it. We'll actually have to wait for court for that because it is an ongoing prosecution and I can't speak to that today. What I can say in general terms is I have as recent as yesterday worked with the uh, real estate board and, and other agencies of enforcement that can actually start to tackle that problem now that we're in a position that charges have been laid and can share information with other uh, enforcement agencies. Um, the only one who has been released so far, I believe, is the mother of the Kangs, uh, Mohanbir. Everyone else, Everyone else remains in custody. 
They were arrested um, starting on the 7th of August and up until yesterday, one person does remain outstanding and Dooley Picanto has not yet been arrested. I think it's very significant and my hope is that it will have an incredible impact on the gang violence that we're seeing in the Lower Mainland. As the superintendent mentioned, these, these two groups were in conflict with multiple groups in the Lower Mainland. The Brothers Keepers, who they used to be partners with and split from, and obviously the original conflict that the entire group was involved in with the Sandu Sidhu group out of the valley, as well as one-off conflicts here and there, um, and they also have conflict in jail. So I think this could have a, a significant impact on the uh, region's violence. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't think, it's not the gang, it's, they're not gang charges, and it's not the first time. Um, the first time actually back when I was an inspector, and that was uh, on the, the Swallow Group downtown, and that was the first time the Vancouver Police Department were, were involved in organized crime charges. It's a rare charge in British Columbia. I don't know off the top of my head how many there are, but there's not a lot of them. It's a very difficult charge to prove. It's very very complex in nature. This is the second time we've ever done it, but this is more wide sweeping, more accused. Um, the Public Prosecution Service of Canada has been a partner throughout this and they've assisted the police in the laying of these types of charges, which if convicted, of course everybody's innocent until, until proven guilty. Uh, however, if they are convicted, they'd be looking at significant, uh, probably double digit uh, years of jail time for these types of offenses. Uh, well, that's a sweeping comment by myself, but I think generally speaking, if you're convicted of it, it all depends on all of the sentencing principles, but it's, uh, it's more than the, the, the regular type charges. We, we, we see the kind of sentences for these types of offenses, the courts treat it very, very seriously because they are specifically with intent involved in criminal activity for the benefit of a criminal organization, which is really is a danger to society as a whole. The team commander, uh, Staff Sergeant Byrne, is 100% accurate. Uh, she knows about this file and, and the, the, has her, her finger on the pulse of gang violence in the region. I would wholeheartedly agree with her that this is a mitigating factor. We have actually, as we've conducted arrests and interdictions throughout, we've conducted several interdictions where people were on their way to kill people and we are charging them, with, we'll be charging them with that, uh, that we are seeing a downtick, a significant downtick, as we've seen before, this, ta this type of tactic works. Chief, Chief Gately referred to the provincial tactical enforcement priorities. Um, this type of strategy works in mitigating violence and we're seeing a downtick. I just looked at the statistics in Vancouver recently and we're down somewhere like 40% for, for uh, shootings. Since the investigation started, um, because as I referred to, this is a task force, so we've done other interdictions coming up to this that, it, that I believe have mitigated gang, gang violence and the incarceration of these individuals should continue that trend uh, spe specifically. You've got several red scorpions and unindicted co-conspirators. Are they operating this completely? Some of the people in there are incarcerated, yes. Like, for example, Mr. Bacon is in custody. He still uh, got his fingers in the five prison then? Is that what he did? As an unindicted co-conspirator, he would be involved in this type of criminality and that speaks to what he's, what he's up to. We have a history of being able to stop people from being involved in gang violence, and I anticipate that we'll be able to continue that trend in the future. Do you have an estimate for what a major operation like this would cost, uh, all included? I remember years ago when I was a homicide detective, my sergeant saying to me, there's no price on public safety. Um, this is expensive. Um, there's a lot of resources. We, we called together some at its peak, some 45 full-time investigators from across the region, and the cost of policing is, um, is not cheap. However, um, it's difficult to put the price on a human life, and we saved several lives, and we will continue to do so. so.
you kind of asked a question and then answered it, but the, uh, I'm, uh, in my experience, if people are in jail, they're less likely to commit violence on the street. So yes, that would be a logical conclusion. The, the Crown has to abide by the law and, and or, or there's a danger to the public. That's a, a significant uh, factor in what the, the judge will consider on, on, upon their release. And as uh, Staff Sergeant Byrne has, has stated previously, almost all of them except the mum have been, been held in custody so far. I think I will defer to Staff Sergeant Byrne on that. So I can just speak in general terms about that because obviously there, there is active investigations going on with respect to all the seized firearms. But over the course of the entire task force, not just Project Territory, we did seize 120 firearms. Approximately half of those guns are non-restricted. And when I spoke to the people at the National Weapons Enforcement Team, they advised me that approximately 65% of the firearms uh, seized in Canada are actually locally sourced or home, home fire, Canadian firearms that are either purchased um, by straw purchasers, someone who will purchase multiple firearms and then resell them on the street, or stolen and targeted break and enters. So at that point, that's all I can say about where the guns are from, coming from is just these stats that were provided to me. Yeah, it is a very concerning uh, device. Obviously, you can see it in the photo. Um, that's about all I can unfortunately share with you. Um, who had it and what it was intended for is part of the ongoing investigation and will be part of the prosecution, so I can't speak to that, unfortunately. Hi, good morning. Uh, yeah, regarding your question, uh, there's no question uh, this investigation and taking out uh, the Kangs and uh, the Red Scorpions through uh, Cal Latimer is going to leave a void. But I think we have a pretty good understanding of uh, the competing uh, groups that are uh, operating within the province here. I think what's very important as well is that uh, through PTEP and meeting with senior leaders in municipal uh, uh, departments and RCMP detachments, we're able to uh, strategically uh, move our resources and our funding in order to go after the uh, most significant targets uh, at the time. And uh, this is a really eff efficient, effective way of going after uh, organized crime in the province here. How big a portion of the Red Scorpions do you think you guys are taking down? Yeah, I would say Kyle Ladmer is one of the uh, uh, senior leaders for sure in the Red Scorpions. Okay, thanks for your questions. Do you have any more questions for the panel before we call it? Okay, thank you so much.